I'd like to welcome you all back to our study of the book of Jeremiah. And today's study takes us to chapter 10. Well, this chapter can easily be um, outlined, divided into two. The first 16 verses, verses 1 through 16, have to do with, again, an extended critique of Judah's idolatry. And then in the rest of chapter 10, verses 17 through 25, we see Judah being judged, removed from the promised land, and exiled. Also, in verses 1 through 16, we will see, we will encounter, we will be able to read passages, verses that speak about the greatness, the attributes of our God, the true God, the God of Israel, the Lord. Let's look at verse 1 of Jeremiah chapter 10. It's very interesting for me the way this chapter starts with these words. Hear what the Lord says to you, O house of Israel. This is a wonderful reminder, particularly for those who believe in the true God then and now, that God does speak. Hear what the Lord says to you. The big question is, for us, do we want, do we desire, do we long to hear from God? When we take part in a Bible study group, do we want to hear from God? Or do we just want to be heard by people so they know we know more than them about the Bible? When we listen to a preacher, do we desire to hear from God? For God to teach and even to correct our wrong understanding of who He is and our wrong attitude toward others? Even in your own personal Bible reading and study, God speaks to you and He wants you to hear Him. Do we really want to hear from God? Every time God's church God's people gather for worship, whether in person or online. God speaks. He speaks through the prayers, reading of scripture, sermon, the sacraments, the hymns, or songs. Again, the question, do we really seek to hear from God? In this COVID-19 related lockdown, what have we heard? from God? What lessons, messages have we received from Him? The prophet Jeremiah declares to God's people in verse 2, this is what the Lord says. So what is the Lord through Jeremiah saying to His people about Himself here in Jeremiah chapter 10? particularly the first 16 verses. There are at least two important truths, lessons about the Lord, the God of Israel, that God wants to teach the idolatrous people of Judah. The first one is that the Lord is the great God, the maker or creator of all things. After Jeremiah spoke about the worthless idols that the nations or other nations, non-Jews, Gentile nations, including Israel, have worshipped wooden idols that craftsmen made or shaped and adorned with silver and gold, verses 2 to 5, Jeremiah declares this about the true God in verse 6. Look at verse 6. No one is like you, O Lord. You are great. Then the next line, and your name is mighty. You know, that's the same Hebrew word previously translated as great. Okay, here it's mighty. So you can also put here great, and your name is mighty or great in power. Another meaning of the Hebrew word gadol, translated here as great and then mighty, is the word high. 
The greatness and great power of the God of Israel set him up high, way above, far above other gods, false gods, idols of the nations that Israel also chose to turn to and worship. And the greatness of the Lord is shown in the truth, verse 16, that He is the creator of everything that exists. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. You know, I, I love reading this verse and slipping in that word great. Listen to what I tried to do. But God made the earth by his, and then I slipped in, I added great, okay? But God made the earth by his great power. He founded the world by his great wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his great understanding. Just to emphasize that our God is great. His power is great. His wisdom is great. His understanding is great. A couple of applications. Maybe great or not so great applications for us here as God's church, God's people today. First one is, people then turned to idols. They thought were great and could make them great and could take away their great fear of the unknown. Look at verse 2. Imagine the people terrified by signs in the sky, most probably eclipses, comets, but they were terrified of the unknown. Many people today would do anything to have great power and to be great to be cool, to be awesome. You know, if you really want to be great, or if you know people who want to be great, let them know that they should know, connect with, and be in right relationship with our God, who is great. In fact, Jeremiah chapter 10 also says that there is no one like him in terms of greatness the second application for us is people then were also reminded that the god of israel is great in power for he is the creator of all things and that's a timely reminder also for us god's people today like us at bethel church that there is nothing impossible with our God. Our God is much bigger than our biggest problem today. What's your biggest problem? Could that problem be bigger than our God? The Bible says that nothing can separate us from God's love. If there's anything that could separate us from God's love, then that blows his power to smithereens. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Romans 8, verse 31 and following. Not a global plague like COVID-19 or any global unrest or war. Not even the chaos, protests in the streets of this nation. There is a song that has encouraged me for so many years. And the lines really encourage me, even in my, during those times that I was really going through uh, so many challenges in my life. I think it's entitled, He Will Carry You. Um, it's part of the music, part of uh, a play called Joseph the Dreamer. There is no problem too big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, He cannot move it. And there is no storm too dark, God cannot calm it. 
There is no sorrow too deep. He, God, cannot soothe it. And if he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my brother and all my sister that he will carry you. The Lord, our great God, the creator of all things, can and will be able to carry you. So, let us continue to trust our God's great power to strengthen us, to comfort us, to help us, and be encouraged by His presence in our lives, even as we go through tough times or dark moments of our lives. The Lord, through Jeremiah, did not only remind His people that He is the great God, the maker, creator of all things, but he also taught the people of Judah that he is the Lord, the living God, the eternal King of all nations. Notice how Jeremiah contrasted the lifeless, worthless idols or false gods of the nations with the true God of Israel. Look at verse 4 again. I will read from the New Living Translation. They decorate it, the wooden idols, they decorate it with gold and silver and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails. Why? So it won't fall over. Verse 5 is time from the Message Bible. It's like a scarecrow in a cabbage patch. Can't talk. Dead wood that has to be carried. Can't walk. So don't be impressed by such stuff. It's useless for either good or evil. But the Lord, says Jeremiah in verse 10, in contrast, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal King. When he is angry, what happens? The earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Jeremiah earlier referred to the Lord as the nation's king. Look at verse 7. This time I'd like to read from the New King James Version. Who would not fear? I think NIV uses the word revere because that's exactly the essence of the word fear. It's not to be scared, but to uh, reverence, to revere, to be in awe. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your rightful due. For among all the wise men, I think that refers to kings. Look at the next phrase. And in all their kingdoms. For among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. Again, a couple of applications. Number one, kings then and now are known for their great wisdom. But here, Jeremiah declares that the Lord, the God of Israel, far exceeds the wisdom of the wisest kings. And Daniel echoed this truth when he praised God after he received the vision or wisdom of God that enabled him to interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Daniel declares in Daniel chapter 2 verse 20, Praise be to the God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are His. We all need God's wisdom to guide us in making the right and God-pleasing decisions or choices. That's why James encouraged us, encouraged people to turn to God when they lack or need such wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5 reads, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you from asking. The people of Judah in Jeremiah's time, especially the shepherds or the leaders, did not turn to God for wisdom, but turned to idols. And they became like the idols they worship. And like these idols, they also would experience God's judgment. Verse 21, Jeremiah chapter 10. The shepherds are senseless. 
New King James Version uses the word dull hearted. English Standard Version and the NASB use the word stupid. The shepherds are stupid, senseless, dull hearted. Why? Because they do not inquire of the Lord. And what's the result? So they do not prosper and all their flock, the people they lead, is scattered. We may not turn to wooden idols or idols made of metal or of stone, but we may be tempted to turn to things that we depend on far more than our God, like money or wealth or power or popularity, alcohol, pornography, illegal drugs, etc. If God is our king, he wants nothing less than our all. God is either king over all of us or he is not king at all. The Lord, our living God, our eternal king, reigned yesterday, he reigns today, he will reign tomorrow, and he will reign forever and ever. He will always be on his throne 24 7. For he is the one who promised you and me Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Hebrews 13, verse 5. The second application is, the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, is not only king of Israel, he is king over all the kingdoms of the earth. Even if all nations then and now do not acknowledge the Lord as their king, the truth remains, as the Bible teaches, that he is the king of all nations. A good king of Judah, King Jehoshaphat, declares this truth in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6. Jehoshaphat addressed the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord, and he declares, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. And because God is king of all nations, God's people then and now should not look down, show partiality, or discriminate against any person because of his or her skin color, or language, or race, or country of origin. God's people, God's church, we should repent from prejudging people without getting to know them first. We must repent from and stop using our power and resources to take advantage of someone else's ignorance, disability, poverty, and weakness. Repentance and forgiveness are necessary for the experience of true reconciliation, healing, and freedom. The Lord, our great God, the Maker, Creator of all things, the Living God, the Eternal King of all nations, will make it possible for us, particularly his people, to live together in unity, loving each other, serving one another, only because of his love, his power. Let's continue to turn to God, depend on him, and trust him. Let us pray. We praise you, O Lord, our God, 
for you are the creator of heaven and earth. Your name is great in power. We praise you, O Lord, for you are our living God, the eternal King of all the nations. Help us, O Spirit of the living God, to understand your word and live our lives each day according to it. Help us and comfort us in our struggles. Enable us to grow in our relationship with you. Forgive us for the many times that we have failed to obey you, to love you, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Come, O Holy Spirit, come and heal your people today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.